In this episode, we're gonna cover a few very important topics that you should seriously consider before purchasing a kit or an already flying aircraft. Coming up. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Wallstrom with the Experimental Aircraft Channel covering experimental, light sport, ultralight, and new tech aviation. I've been promoting the experimental and kit building side of aviation for about three years now, full time. And I thought maybe it was time to sit down and share what I've learned working from the inside. First, let's talk about the options of building your very own aircraft and what is available to the builder today. All right, so let's say that you want to build from plans and you want to build the entire project yourself, which is basically being a scratch builder. There are only a few in production and large scale production aircraft manufacturers that actually provide and make available plans to build their aircraft. And for obvious reasons. Of course, they want you to buy, to buy a kit or a quick build kit because that's where there's more profit from just sending, selling you a set of plans for $500 to $1,000. And these aircraft companies that are making these plans available that are in production is a great choice because obviously there's a whole fleet of them flying. They have learned a lot about their aircraft through the years and if there's any changes that have been made, they'll update the plans and send those updates out to the builders and flyers of these aircraft. And that's not to say that if you want to build from plans, completely scratch built from something that is not big in production, um, that the plans aren't very good. They may be very good, but something to consider is that you might have to dive in just a little bit deeper on finding information on how to do something or the specifics of a certain sub-assembly, which there is some options out there for you as a builder. There are several really good forums um, people have created on, on different websites and on the Facebook group, if you Facebook, I know some people, some people do not, there are many Facebook groups airframe specific. So if you're building uh, a low wing um, experimental that um, you're interested in, if you search for that particular one, you'll probably find a group of people it might be a, a low number of people, like 50 to 100, uh, but you might find a group of people already interested in doing the exact same that you are um, and can share different experiences from their builds. And just a note on that, when you're seeking out information online, on the internet, or Facebook, the people that you interact with and so forth, if it's just a particular sub-assembly that it's to the plan and you wanna learn like a tip or trick on how to do something, that is fine. If you wanted to get more information a little bit more in depth, it would be best to find out if that person has actually completed the entire aircraft and has flown it. So building from a set of plans, and in my opinion, is probably the most rewarding option of building, can be very enjoyable and very doable. You just might have to have a little bit more time invested in doing a little bit of research along with building every last piece and part. Building from a kit is a very popular option, and honestly, it's probably one of the most common options building your aircraft. But here's what I've learned working on the inside the last couple of years I want to share with you. There seems to be, in reality, a lot more fewer companies that you would think that actually are in full production of an aircraft and have parts sitting, waiting on a shelf, ready to ship out to your door. And I'm not talking necessarily the season that we're currently in right now with raw material supply chain issues and the baby boom or what I'm calling the aircraft boom because everybody was stuck at home for the past two years and wanted to fulfill some lifelong dream of building airplanes. You may be surprised to learn that most of the aircraft companies out there, I'd say even the majority of the companies that are out there are very small, small businesses, nearly mom and pop sized businesses that are serving our aviation community, which is fine. But I say that just to put things in perspective when you give them a call or send them an email, they might actually be in the back working on bending or shaping a part or welding something while the phone is ringing. So keep that in mind that not all these aircraft companies, and the majority, are not these great big, big box companies with hundreds of employees and there is an employee for every last task needed. It is usually a very small company, possibly five to 15 people, and the same person that is doing this task also has to answer the phone or answer your email with your questions. So be very patient when you're trying to communicate with these companies knowing that you are basically helping to support our aviation industry and our small little niche community 
of kit building. If you think about it, these are all handmade products, right? It's a handmade vehicle. It's bits and pieces and parts that you will assemble at your house, but what other things are, are like that in the industry? And the first thing that comes to mind is the high-end industry of luxury sports cars. So those are all hand-built sports cars, and of course the price reflects in that. Luckily, a lot of these kits are a bit more affordable than a high-line sports car that's hand-built. But just to keep that in perspective. Okay, so now a few words of caution that I've learned working in this industry for the last couple years. And that is not everything that you see in an advertisement, on a YouTube video, or even in person is actually in production. It might be the very first one, which means it's actually a prototype, which is great and can be great, especially considering all the tools and technology that we have to develop aircraft and to do testing in computer uh, models and all that's before it comes into reality. That is great. But there still needs to be some real world testing done by the manufacturer, not you, to make sure all the bugs have been worked out of that aircraft. Things like stall testing, flutter analysis, weight and balance checks. They may have to move some ballast around here and there to make sure that the weight and balance is done correctly. Things like that that aren't gonna be just figured out overnight and you want somebody to have some hours on it. This is in fact the world of experimental aviation. So you have the freedom to do whatever you want, to build whatever you want. But if you are working with a company, just know you're able to make that decision as well. If you wanna be the beta tester or the beta builder or the test pilot, make sure you have the conversation with these companies of where they're at with the number of aircraft that have been built and flown and where they're at with that particular aircraft and all these other testing. You are again welcome as an experimental builder to build whatever you want or to work with these companies to, to do these things. So one very key point I'd like to make here if you decide to buy into one of these companies, uh, especially a brand new aircraft or a brand new company, and that is when it's time to pull your wallet out of your pocket and put some money down on that new aircraft that you're wanting to get. So for that moment, pretend that you have just stepped into a buy here, pay here, used car parking lot. How would you handle yourself? How would you handle your money in that situation? And that would be for any new purchase. I would suggest never paying 100% of the ticket price at that time as a deposit. Great companies like Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com. Avionation at AvionationUSA.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. All right, so the next very popular option for kit building is in fact the quick build kit option. So if you have a bit more money than time, I suggest this is a great option for you. Pay that money and you're gonna save yourself about 300 to 600 hours, depending on the aircraft manufacturer and the different assemblies and processes. You're gonna save yourself between 300 and 600 hours of construction time, which means you will get done and into the air faster by spending that cash. The other added benefit, if you purchase a quick build kit, especially if you're a little bit apprehensive of doing certain sub-assemblies or different areas of an airplane is having the confidence knowing that the manufacturer has in fact assembled that particular portion of your kit build so that uh, you don't have to mess with that. I know some people are concerned about doing like spars or wing attach points or um, just, just certain areas, pick one. Everybody has their own little uh, apprehensive spot of building uh, on their aircraft, which you can work through you can get uh, some assistance through a fellow builder that has done this before. You can go to many seminars on learning uh, different stuff, or I mean, you can pick up the phone and actually call the aircraft manufacturer and they will talk to you. I'm surprised to hear so many people that go on to a Facebook group 
first before going to the actual aircraft manufacturer. Now sometimes I get it, you're in a rush, you're on a weekend and you're trying to get something done. I don't want to say on a rush, you're, you're excited. You're excited to be working on this and you want to get things done. Uh, but nine times out of the 10, even if they're busy, if you call the manufacturer, they'll, they'll answer your question. But do leave a message uh, because there are other builders like you out there calling, trying to find information. But I've, I've always found within uh, a few hours of getting a call back from the manufacturer to help you with your exact question. And as far as the price point on what the, uh, the quick build options are, typically, again, it depends on the manufacturer and the different options of, of what they've got on it, but somewhere between six and $10,000 for one of the quick build options is typically what you would expect to see for that option. Now, before we get into the completed and flying aircraft that are out there available to you, let's talk for just a minute about everything I just spoke of talking about the kits. So first of all, let's talk about the real world depreciation of that kit that you bought or that you, kit you see that's for sale out there. The real world depreciation of this is suddenly just a box of sheet metal and bits and pieces and parts. And it is considered used if it is not purchased directly from the manufacturer. It is in fact a used kit. So when you buy a kit, please expect to buy that kit and finish it and fly it. Because if you don't, it will turn into a box of parts. It will depreciate. Meaning, don't expect to list your used kit, especially not flying, up on the different places that you can uh, sell these kits and post it for the exact price that you bought it for, including shipping and taxes. I I'm surprised to see so many times, uh, like on Barnstormers or on Craigslist or uh, Facebook uh, Marketplace, somebody advertising a kit that they bought four years ago for the same exact price that they purchased it from that. It will depreciate. In all honesty, if you're the one buying the kit, consider this. Would you rather buy one from the factory where it's shipped to you in a sealed box, an inventory list created, and it has been untouched, or that it's been sitting around in your hangar, your shop, your garage, the box has been open, parts have been moved from this shelf to that shelf, or maybe you've even moved locations and it, it is aged, the parts may or may not be in the box, and all kinds of things can happen. So consider that if you are the seller and if you are the buyer of how this kit has moved around. Now another thing to consider when buying a used kit, and that is the plans and assembly manual. Most all plans are serialized or you are assigned a build number or a builder number. So what I would like to do before going out and spending my time and money and gas money to go check out the kit is obviously have a good in-depth conversation with the seller and get that plans number or build number or builder's number. Write that down and contact the manufacturer and give them that number and explain, get the full name um, of the builder, first and last name and give that to the manufacturer and they will check to see if that is a current registered plans holder or if it's changed hands many times. Uh, they want to know that because you are only allowed to build one airplane per set of plans. So what obviously the manufacturer doesn't want you to do is buy a set of plans from somebody who built a, an airplane to completion and then they are selling the plans to you thinking you're thinking that it's a it's a fresh set of plans that hasn't been built from you build off that plans and you're going to need to at least at the very least need to buy a new set of plans from that manufacturer for that new build or sometimes what they all sometimes what the manufacturer will do is simply move that plans or build number into your name so they can have like a track record and kind of follow the plans through that and sometimes there's a fee for it sometimes it's something as simple as 100 bucks might be a few hundred bucks, but go ahead and register that to you. So when it's time for you to register your aircraft, there isn't any issue with that being that particular brand manufacturer of your aircraft. This is experimental. You could build something from plans and call it whatever you want, but if you want to, to be the actual brand of what you are building, that set of plans and that serial number or builder number is very important. All right, so regarding going to look at an aircraft kit that has already been started, or mostly assembled, I would advise you, if you haven't built an aircraft before, 
bring somebody along who has and bring somebody who has built something in that genre of building meaning working with wood fabric steel tubing and welding or sheet metal and rivets bring somebody along who's had some experience in that genre so they know the very specific things to look for in the nooks and crannies of the aircraft build and when you're there don't be afraid to open up and inspect and turn things over be very respectful of this airframe of course because it could be fragile you don't want to scratch it dent it or whatnot but but treat it as if it was your own for a minute and don't be afraid to open things up turn it around ask for inspection covers to be opened up um, however you can access it access every last corner behind things under things because you want to inspect on aluminum aircraft of course you want to check for rivets and where multiple pieces of metal come together to sandwich you want to make sure that all those have compressed and a rivet has pulled through every piece i've seen several times where there's three pieces of metal and only only two were grabbed by that rivet so what i'm saying is when you go to look at these kits actually specifically go looking for trouble you were wanting to find something wrong not to devalue the project not to beat the seller down because he's already been beat up because we just talked about depreciation not to do any of that but go looking for trouble so you can see if this is the right project for you now you might find trouble and you might find some things that need to be repaired and that's okay uh, in that case you might be able to lower the price a little bit depending on how in-depth that is if you need to order an entire new uh, part from the manufacturer or sheet metal or whatnot that can be costly with shipping and stuff like that but a lot of these things are in fact repairable you just have to be able to accept which level of um, issues are associated with that particular project so let me give you a real world story a very short story of my experience in this exact situation of going to look at a used kit about five or six years ago i found an rv6 for a good price it was the entire kit i think minus the finish kit so it was about five hours five hours away i coordinated borrowing of a trailer had the trailer in tow went to go check this out after five hours of driving excited to see this kit and so forth did the, the poking around and uncovering this and opening this and that's where i did see for the first time actually several places where there was three or four pieces of metal sandwiched together and a couple of rivets did not grab all the metal so that was the first time i saw that but the surprising thing that i saw and this is where i say treat some of these things like a used car market or a buy here pay here is unfortunately some people don't look at these as aircraft and things that people will fly and fly their family around in and it's just simply a product something used they need to sell and get their money out of so be very wary and protective of yourself because of those reasons. This is a, a used market and some people are just looking to get something sold. And I said that to say, there were some things that were actually on purpose hidden. So I was looking around at the wings and they were stored vertically, which you often do, storing wings in like a cradle vertically. Decided to pull them off of the cradle because it was very low to the ground and I saw some tape. So we put up on a table and there was about three layers, three rows of black duct tape covering the entire leading edge of the wing. You can say, well, maybe they did that just to protect them from getting scratched up. That was not the case. Unfortunately, this seller, this builder had moved several times or whatnot. And the entire leading edge of both wings looked like somebody took a peen hammer and just hammered the leading edge of the wings. They were garbage. They were absolute garbage. And they were covered with tape and the tape kind of bridged the denting on the leading edge of that. So I'm not saying that to, to say that everybody is like that. And from my experiences, everybody is not like that, but there is an exception to every rule and I found it. So spend some time when you're there inspecting these used kits and look go looking for trouble and now for those of you that are looking for something just to fly somebody has already built it and you just want to go fly it which is fine and if you haven't built anything before and specific to this genre of building like sheet metal or whatnot 
I would advise to bring somebody with you that has experience in that type of building or even more specifically this particular airframe because they'll be able to know what to look for specific to that design having have already built one they'll know some of the, the problematic areas or maybe not so much even problems but just harder to build areas that may leave some opportunity for somebody to, to mess up here and there. So that would be very helpful to bring somebody else along. And if not, simply treat this like you would any other aircraft purchase and get a condition inspection or a pre-buy inspection by an actual a and so they can go through and try to find things that may be unsafe, uh, just have some extra wear on it, or again, just like a typical pre-buy inspection on any certified aircraft. And what I've heard over the years is one of the, the biggest issues that has to be dialed in with an aircraft. I, I think the rigging can be handled pretty quickly, um, meaning that it, it flies hands off. It's not trying to turn or dive or this and that. But the number one issue that I have heard through talk of different builders and first time flyers is cooling. So that's something that you want to talk to them about and maybe even in your flight testing, verify cylinder head temperature, exhaust temperatures. Um, cowling design is very specific to engine, not necessarily airframe. And there's a, a couple different manufacturers out there that you can have almost any engine you want, which means that there's gonna be a very specific cowling for that engine. So be very mindful of that to see what kind of cooling issues are are happening with that aircraft or if they've worked that out. But that is the number one issue that I've heard uh, down an aircraft is cooling. All right, well, I hope that some of this has helped some of you new people that are getting into aviation or about to finally pull the trigger on getting the kit and getting started and joining this great family of aircraft builders and, and flyers. So if you have any questions, absolutely drop me some comments below. I'd love to hear them and uh, maybe what you've learned from this or questions you have about getting into a, a new kit or a used kit or a new aircraft or a used aircraft, give me some comments below. If you're brand new here, absolutely I invite you right now to subscribe, hit the like button like we're all supposed to do, and check out some of our other videos at experimentalaircraftchannel.com.